An amendment that aims to stop British citizens and residents from taking part in forced organ harvesting was passed by Parliament yesterday. The legislation makes it a criminal offence to travel to countries like China for organ transplants. It follows a ruling from an independent tribunal in 2019 that found the Chinese state guilty of forced organ harvesting on a substantial scale. He's NTD's Jane Warrell with more. Over the years, we've heard numerous disturbing pieces of evidence about forced organ harvesting in China, where a victim has their organs carved out against their will and sold for profit. On Wednesday, Parliament passed legislation designed to stop British citizens and residents being part of this crime, an amendment welcomed by both sides of the House. The restrictions are based on ensuring there is appropriate consent, no coercion and no financial gain. In some parts of the world, organs are not given freely but are taken by force. And we must bear this in mind in the drafting of our legislation. This comes after the House of Lords passed Lord Hunt's amendment to the new Health and Care Bill in mid-March. Forced organ harvesting in China is a crime of forcibly extracting organs from prisoners of conscience, killing the victim in the process. The harvested organs are sold to Chinese officials, Chinese nationals or foreigners for transplantation. My Lords, this is a very modest amendment doing our bit to try and prevent this obnoxious habit. My Lords, I beg to... The government put forward its own version of Lord Hunt's amendment, focusing on the commercialisation of the organ transplant industry outside the UK. The government's version extends existing legislation, where making a profit from selling organs within Britain is already illegal. And I would reassure honourable members that our approach would not only tra target transplant tourists but anyone involved in making the arrangements for the purchase of the organ who may be a British national. Um, the government amendment compare, uh, paired with our commitment to work with NHS Blood and Transplant to make more patients aware of the legal, health and ethical ramifications of purchasing an organ will send an unambiguous signal that complicity in the abuses associated with the overseas organ trade will not be tolerated. This amendment is significant as it would make it illegal for British citizens to take part in this disturbing trade of forced organ harvesting overseas. It will be covering people who are looking for an organ transplant as well as organ brokers. Now we know that seven parliaments have already passed their own versions of this type of legislation to combat transplant abuse, including Israel, Spain, Taiwan, Italy, Norway, Belgium and South Korea. Several MPs, Lords and supporters of this legislation have been working hard to get this passed through Parliament and this government version of the amendment is likely to become law at the end of April. A prisoner of conscience at a detention centre in Shanghai has been paralysed due to torture. Authorities arrested him and his fiancée because they refused to denounce their faith in Falun Gong. Their family members and friends in the U.S. are appealing for their release. Chinese Falun Gong practitioner He Bing Gang has been paralysed at a detention centre in Shanghai. This is according to his lawyer, who hasn't been able to talk to him over the phone until earlier this month. Authorities had cut He's contact with the outside world for more than four months. Deng Rong, who lives in New York, is He's family friend. She says He is in critical condition. He is paralyzed. He can only lie down and he cannot walk due to problems in the spine. He also deals with headaches, dizziness, urinary incontinence and cannot fall asleep at night. He's fiancé, Zhang Yibo, is being held at the same detention center. Authorities took both of them away last October. Their lawyer was not allowed to talk to them by phone until March 10th. A delivery person came to his door. As soon as he opened the door, the police rushed in, took him away, along with his computer and cell phone. He's fiancé is also a Falun Gong practitioner. Authorities took her away from her home around the same time. The police pried open John's door and took her away with her tablet, cell phone and electronic devices. Falun Gong is a spiritual practice rooted in Chinese tradition. It features meditative exercises and is guided by the principles of truthfulness, compassion and tolerance. Two decades ago, the CCP launched a campaign against the practice. Millions of practitioners in China have been detained, tortured and even killed since then. Over the past two decades, 
He had been kicked out of his university for refusing to denounce his faith. He had also been detained several times afterwards. This is not the first time he suffered physical torture while in detention. In 2010, he was half paralyzed due to torture at the same detention center. Back in 2009, Zhang was sentenced to a year and a half in jail for refusing to denounce her faith. She was a manager at a foreign company. Her brother appealed to Chinese authorities, asking them to release Zhang and her fiancé He. She does no harm to society. She is a law-abiding person. Just because she practices a Buddhist meditation, she was imprisoned and even sentenced. And now, 13 years later, they have arrested my sister once again. Zhang's brother says that authorities accused Zhang and He of undermining national security. The brother says what the authorities are doing is against the law. Now turning to America, a group of senators is trying to stop the Chinese Communist Party from spying on Americans. This as high-profile espionage cases emerge and a major decision by the Biden administration comes under scrutiny. NTD's Iris Tao has more. That's what Senator Rick Scott, along with five other Republican senators, say their latest legislation is trying to do. Of sending spies to our country to steal sensitive research and trade secrets. Following earlier discussions on China's threat, Senator Rick Scott on Thursday introduced the Protect America's Innovation and Economic Security from CCP Act. It aims to re-establish the China Initiative at the Department of Justice. The program, established in 2018, seeks to prevent spying by the Chinese Communist Party on American soil. What the Communist Party of China is doing is they want to control our lives. But the Biden administration ended the China initiative in February, replacing it with what it called a broader strategy. These efforts are really just the tip of the iceberg. The call comes amid heightened alert on the long arm of the Chinese regime. Just weeks ago, the DOJ charged five people with acting on behalf of Beijing to stalk, harass and spy on Chinese dissidents in the U.S., including a congressional candidate in New York. For decades, the Chinese Communist Party has targeted, harassed, and threatened U.S.-based Tibetans, Uyghurs, Falun Gong members, and pro-democracy activists. And now, as if that weren't offensive enough, the government of China has targeted the campaign of a candidate for Congress. A new report is shining more light on the possible origins of the pandemic. According to documents obtained by a nonprofit watchdog, the National Institutes of Health may have deleted genetic information about the virus from the Wuhan lab. The U.S.-based medical research agency reportedly made the change at the Chinese lab's request. The Wuhan facility has been at the center of pandemic origin controversy for over two years. And some suspect the virus first emerged from the lab. Kevin Hogan with NTD's News Today has more. That watchdog is the Empower Oversight Whistleblowers Research Group, or EO. It obtained the documents through a Freedom of Information Act request and a lawsuit. The group obtained over 230 pages of documents dating from 2020. Those include emails, memos, and other correspondence between the lab and multiple NIH officials. Two prominent officials are mentioned in the documents, former NIH director at the time, Dr. Francis Collins, and Dr. Anthony Fauci. He said to have actively participated in the discussions and decision-making at these documents described. Empower Oversight issued a statement Tuesday. It reads, on June 5, 2020, a Wuhan University researcher requested that NIH retract the researcher's submission of a bio project because of an error. The Wuhan researcher explained, quote, I'm sorry for my wrong submitting. Three days later, the NIH turned down the researcher's request and the agency advised that it prefers to edit or replace sequences as opposed to deleting them. But eight days later, NIH officials went ahead and deleted the genetic sequencing data just like the Wuhan researcher requested. The researcher wanted to submit an updated version and withdraw the old one. Then the NIH concluded the discussion by saying it had withdrawn everything. The documents also say Collins and Fauci hosted a Sunday afternoon Zoom meeting. That was after another researcher, Jesse Bloom, alerted the NIH about the deleted sequences. The documents further show the following. Quote, Professor Trevor Bedford of the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center 
later sent the group an email stating that the deleted data seemed to support the idea that the pandemic began outside the Huanan market in Wuhan and that the matter must be analyzed properly. And if the virus did originate outside of that market, it would undermine the official claim by the Chinese regime and reinforce claims that experts in the U.S. and elsewhere have that the pandemic likely started inside the Wuhan lab. China is launching a campaign to shape students' understanding in the Russia-Ukraine war. It's happening in multiple Chinese provinces. A photo from the class slides is circulating online, titled, Why Russia Sent Troops to Ukraine. It lists four major aspects. The corruption of the Ukrainian government, that Ukraine's troops and Nazis slaughter their own people in the Donbass region, mass production of destructive weapons, and that NATO's eastward expansions compressed Russia's strategic space. In 2021, Russia accused NATO of wanting to approve Ukraine's request to join them. Russia also accused NATO of arming Ukraine and sending mercenaries to Donbass. The campaign also labeled the U.S. as the originators of the Russia-Ukraine tragedy. The Secretary General of Asia-Pacific Elite Interchange Association in Taiwan believes the wave of a unified narrative on the Russia-Ukraine war is to legitimize Beijing's possible use of force against Taiwan in the future. The Pentagon is on the move. The U.S., U.K. and Australia are boosting their defense capabilities against China. The three world powers say they plan to work together on developing hypersonic missiles. Here's more. New development on America's security pact with the UK and Australia. The countries say they're working to develop a hypersonic weapon system critical to modern warfare. Working together, the best technologists, best defense industry, uh, the best of our, our defense forces, ensuring that each of our capabilities is being raised. The announcement comes months after China tested hypersonic weapons, weapons that could pose a threat to the United States. Australia's prime minister points to the urgency. The the paramount goal is to ensure we get that capability as soon as we can, and it's in the best form that it can be working with our partners. He says hypersonic weapons are an important part of modern warfare. They are one of the key technologies of combat in the future, and uh, the long-range strike capability is a critical part of our defence as set out in our defence strategic plan. Australia has been wanting to shore up its long-strike capability. That's as the country is becoming increasingly concerned with China's military expansion. Last November, after news broke that China has been rapidly expanding nuclear warheads, Australia's defense minister warned that every major city in Australia, including Hobart, is within range of China's missiles. Just a month before Australia's warning, China's hypersonic weapon test was setting off alarms in the Pentagon. America's top general, Mark Milley, called it very concerning. Milley also noted China's testing is close to a critical turning point, adding it has all of our attention. As for the hypersonic weapon system itself, how could it make America vulnerable? It means you launch a nuclear weapon or any kind of weapon into space, into orbit, and it stays there, then you tell it to come in and destroy something. And it can come from any direction. So missile defense or preparations don't work against it. In fact, there's almost no warning time. This is the uh, shock value. It's a shock weapon. And the U.S. is not the only nation concerned. Prior to announcing the hypersonic weapons development, Australia said it would pour over $2 billion into upgrading its missiles. As defense minister says, there's a potential of conflict within the region within a couple of years. Adding Australia should be realistic about that threat.